Mallory Maddox on your Action 12 News. The Joplin city manager finds himself in the hot seat when it comes to answering questions about a former police chief. There could be a common thread between all the suspects in the Joplin murder cases. And after 38 years of teaching the area's best and brightest, one local college professor is calling it quits. Good evening. You're watching Action 12 News at 6. I'm Mallory Maddox. And I'm Jimmy Sidelecki. More than a year has passed and people are still wondering why the former Joplin police chief received severance pay if he did in fact leave on his own. The Joplin Globe has even sued the city to get that information. It has some people thinking the city misled the public. Action 12's Ken Fatta spoke with the Joplin City Manager today to find out if that was the case. Kent? Mallory, Joplin City Manager Steve Lewis says he acted in the best interests of the city and stands by his decision. When Joplin Police Chief Ed Dennis resigned from his position more than a year ago, it led to some questions. The reason, because the chief received severance pay, even though he supposedly left voluntarily. Court documents reveal that disciplinary action was taken against the chief, but the city manager denies that the chief was forced out. Uh, so it was really my duty, my responsibility to, to deal with uh, the personnel situation that arose. Uh, but having said that, uh, the chief did voluntarily resign and uh, it did, was disappointing to me because we had to make adjustments to keep the department moving forward. Dennis received more than $5,000 in severance pay, but a lot of this information would not have been available if not for a lawsuit brought against the city. So this has left many Joplin residents suspicious. Well, I think they should have been more upfront with it. You know, they kind of were hiding things, and I don't think you should when you're in public office like that. Personally, I think it was a, probably a cover-up. I think they probably asked him to leave, and that's the only reason you'd give him severance pay. But the city manager says that this was a personnel issue and that the city didn't think the information should be made public. They should be kept confidential. That was uh, our, our, uh, our opinion as well as another uh, local, another attorney's uh, opinion as well, that these were closed documents. Uh, what we sought, what we received through the court process was clarification of that. And what we're doing today is abiding by uh, Judge Daly's decisions. Another uh, city employee did receive severance pay. Leroy Getchell, I should say, the city's finance director, received more than $10,000 over a 10-week period. Now, Kent, this controversy has been going on for quite some time now. How much did the lawsuit end up costing the city? Well, it was pretty, pretty expensive, Mallory. It cost the city more than $5,000. Thanks. That's Ken Fattis reporting live in the newsroom. And we want to hear from you. Do you think the city handled this properly? Just go to our website at kode-tv.com and cast your vote. A Miami man is found guilty of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. 41-year-old Jimmy Lee Sharbett was found guilty of a crime a three-day trial yesterday. Sharbett is a four-time convicted felon with two previous convictions for armed robbery and one for burglary. He possessed a 9mm pistol in his home where evidence showed he conducted drug dealing activities. Turning to weather, it's been a very interesting week just to keep you busy out there. We started <laughs> yes, with has. some sunshine, had a little severe weather, and a kind of a dreary start to our weekend. Right, weekends, and so. now we may see fog in the forecast tonight, too, so I'm not quite done with just the Just another week in the forest. Exactly. Uh, this is what we're looking at tonight cloud cover for the evening, and actually, Overnight tonight, we're going to stay with the cloud cover, but I think late tonight, the clouds will start to clear off, and that will allow temperatures to cool off enough to form some fog. So look for some patchy fog. It may be dense in the morning, 46 for a temperature at 7 a.m. Into the 60s, though, by noon, into the 70s by 5 p.m. Now, it looks like Sunday is going to be even nicer, and I'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Ray. Joplin is not breaking any records with four murders this year, but the total is above the normal average of just two. Action 12's Gretchen Bolander tells us about one common denominator. Wayne Kindred is accused of murdering Tina Schott last month, of stabbing her repeatedly, then dumping her body on a rural county road. But before that happened, he was no stranger to hard time. Kindred has been in and out of the Missouri prison system for armed robbery, two more counts of first-degree robbery, escaping from custody, and another instance of breaking away from custody. For the most part, you're going to find, you won't find people starting out with a murder on their record. There will be other convictions from, you know, from minor things to more serious things. Three suspects in four Joplin murders have prior convictions, which doesn't surprise police. Homicides are a fairly serious crime. Most people that commit 
homicides have some kind of contact with the police and the court system before they do it. Very rarely do you uh, have a homicide suspect that has not been involved in the criminal justice system at all. Past convictions don't play a role in the court case, but they can affect a prison sentence. Just like if you're punishing anybody, the first time somebody commits an offense, you may have some leniency toward them, but if they keep committing the same one, the punishment needs to get more serious. We don't have three strikes and you're out in Missouri, but if you do have two prior felony offenses, then the law allows us to increase the maximum amount of time you're allowed to be in prison. Gretchen Bolander, Action 12 News. Both 20-year-old Jason Price and 61-year-old William Hartman have had past convictions before being charged with murder. But there are exceptions. Dana Gouge is also charged along with Kindred. She has no record in the Missouri system. And the second-degree murder charge against 48-year-old Ted Londo would be his first Missouri conviction if found guilty. A local company has a hefty fine leveled against them because of an environmental concern, but it says the pollution is not the problem. Able Manufacturing, formerly known as Able Body, was fined $85,000 by the Department of Natural Resources. Company Vice President Dan Blackburn says the 2002 violations involved a problem with record keeping. The issue was really a technical violation. It wasn't an actual uh, uh, pollution uh, mission into the environment. And the way our permits were written, it was based on large units or number of units. And now we are more diversified and build a lot smaller product. The state even has acknowledged that uh, they knew we couldn't comply with our permit the way it was written. Able Manufacturing has since corrected the problem and has reestablished its DNR permit. Coming up next on Action 12 News at 6, it's become an annual fundraiser for Joplin Catholic Schools. We'll look at a few of the items going up for sale at this year's auction. And after 38 years on the job, a local college professor is calling it quits. We'll take you to his retirement ceremony next. This is Action 12 News with Jimmy Sidalecki, Mallory Maddox, meteorologist Ray Foreman, and sports with Bruce Vonderhaar. This is your Action 12 News at 6. The close. never too young to a local school newspaper wins top state honors the Missouri Southern State College paper the chart was named best in the state at a Missouri College Media Association's annual convention this year marks the fifth time the chart has received this award since 1994 we're up here every day working hard morning afternoon night and we actually have a really small staff and not as much equipment as some of these other schools do that we compete against, but yet we still compete with them and we win. Campus newspapers from 28 colleges and universities competed at this year's convention. Missouri Southern State College learns it will be losing a longtime faculty member. Dr. Larry Martin, Vice President for Academic Affairs, announces he will retire after this school year. Martin has been with Missouri Southern for 38 years. He has acquired a lot of knowledge about higher education, about this college, about our students, our programs. So uh, he's, as I said, in 38 years, he's become a very valuable individual, and we really are going to lose a lot when he leaves. As far as satisfaction, it probably comes from the teaching, and I think most people would say that. The, the, um, the individual students over the years, you know, how many, how many hundreds of students uh, how, many, how many teachers are there that I help train? And Martin says he will enjoy having more free time to spend with his family. It has become one of the biggest auction events in the Joplin area, and it all goes towards a good cause. Joplin area Catholic schools will hold their seventh annual silent spring auction this Saturday, starting at 5:30 in Joplin's Memorial Hall. Some of the highlights of the auction it includes a restaurant and vacation packages sports memorabilia, and a Disney cruise to the Caribbean and Walt Disney World. All the money raised will go towards area Catholic schools. Coming up next on Action 12 News at 6, it continues to be a strange year for the Kansas City Royals. 
Now they make their way to Toronto, where there is a very serious concern about the SARS virus. Reese will have more on that story in sports, but first, Ray standing by in the Weather Center. Ray? Yes, it is very cool out there this evening. If you're headed out, you might want to take along a light jacket. Now, overnight tonight, we're going to see the clouds that we have in place right now starting to clear off. That could lead to some fog to start off tomorrow morning. However, the rest of the weekend, really improving. Details coming up next. Plus, the wireless connections weather-wise question today, how much of an impact does hail have on the farming community? The answer coming up. This now, your Action 12 weather with meteorologist Ray Foreman. Well, as advertised, a kind of dreary day. The rain did move back in around noon, right. as forecasted uh, by Ray yes. Foreman last night. Now, hopefully, it'll get out of here for the weekend. It, it will, just in time for the weekend. The first part of it tonight, I guess everyone considers Friday night, yes. part of the weekend. I it's do. going to be cloudy. It's going to be cool, too, so take along a jacket. After that, though, a very nice weekend in store. 56 for temperature right now in Joplin. So, yes, it is a little on the chilly side. The cool temperature is a result of cloud cover today and also the rainfall that we had from earlier today. Now, down to the south of us, 55 in Pineville, 59 in Miami. Overnight tonight, we take these temperatures on the local cast towards 6 a.m., and we will be actually in the mid-40s for temperatures. And one of the reasons for that, the skies are going to be clearing out right at about 6 a.m., and as temperatures cool off this much, as a result of the rainfall we had, we'll probably see a little patchy fog around the area, and some of that could be dense for the morning hours. During the afternoon, though, we climbed through the 60s already at lunchtime and into the 70s by 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and this is just the beginning of our warm-up that we're going to see here in Joplin. We could see a few spots actually hitting 80 as we get towards Sunday afternoon. Now, as far as the clouds, yes, we are still socked in with the cloud cover. It's all the result of the upper-level low-off here to the east of us. That's going to continue to track away as it does High pressure is actually going to be building into the west of us, and this is going to be our saving grace, you might say, for the weekend weather because that is going to clear the skies out, especially as we get towards 6 a.m., high pressure starts to build in. But also, as I mentioned, once the temperatures cool off this much, we're going to replace the clouds at 6 a.m. with fog. I would say probably by 9 or 10 o'clock, we'll start to see that fog burning off. And during the afternoon, plenty of sunshine as high pressure is centered right overhead. Now, not only do we have high pressure at the surface, also in the upper levels of the atmosphere and out to the west of us, once high starts to move on to the east of us by tomorrow evening, southeasterly winds are going to come back into Joplin. That's going to help with the warming for Sunday. The southerly winds we see out to the west of us tomorrow will be right here in Joplin. We also add into the fact that we're going to see clear skies right on through the weekend as a strong upper level ridge is building to the west of us. That will keep skies clear for the weekend and our weather will be dry for the weekend as well. Now for tonight, cloudy and cool. Patchy fog developing late tonight, down to 45 for the low with north winds at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Keep in mind the clouds will disappear by sunrise, but we're going to replace that with some patchy fog. Temperatures in the 40s to start off the day with light northeast winds. And during the afternoon, a high temperature of 70. Mostly sunny skies, though, definitely warmer than what we saw for today. And the weekend, Sunday, 78 for a high temperature. So very nice as we go into the second half of the weekend. 70s for next week's highs, but unsettled weather for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So definitely we are fortunate that the unsettled weather is happening on work weekdays rather than the weekend. Good and I, point. I yes. look forward to the weekend, but now I can't use an excuse to sleep in like I did this morning. So. <laughs> right, exactly. You have to get up early. Be outside tomorrow. Hey, I mentioned the weather-wise question for today. What impact does hail have on farming? How about $1 billion wow. in damage every wow. year? I know it has a huge impact on car dealerships mm -hmm. as well and yes. people's roofs that get damaged, but I never thought about that. Well, that's Illinois long actually long. spends $60 million a year on insurance for their farms. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Ray. Mm -hmm. Bruce is in with sports now, and this weekend will be an interesting one for 32 NFL teams. Interesting and long, I yes. think it's safe to say, <laughs> for the NFL draft. It takes place uh, today and tomorrow, seven rounds. We'll have more on the draft coming up, tell you where the Rams and Chiefs are going to select. Plus, high school baseball from this afternoon. Joplin in action, hosting Fayetteville. We've got highlights of this one, plus news on the Royals as well. Stay around. Let's go play and spend the day at Grand Lake Casino.